Hello everyone. Good morning to all. I am Jidin Chandra Babu, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Francis Xavier Engineering College. On behalf of uh, Francis Xavier Engineering College, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone of you who is listening this HTTP. We thank you all for that for taking out of your schedule and joining with us this program. People who feels good about themselves do great work and create great things. One such person here with, I am so glad in introducing our honorable resource person, Dr. R.S. Suja Rose, ma'am. She is a knowledgeable person and become a most distinguished and successful professor with 15 years of teaching and 19 years of resource experience. She is presently working as professor and head of environmental remote sensing and cartography, School of Earth and Atmospheric Science, Madurai Kamaraj University. Madam completed her research degree on the topic a spatial temporal analysis of water sources using remote sensing and GIS, an approach to environmental uh, uh, planning. She has published six books. Also, she has published 12 plus articles in both national and international journals. She has presented 44 purpose, both national and international conferences. She has produced four PhD scholars. Also, she is a coordinator for more than 30 certificate programs, uh, both uh, on basis of remote sensing and GIS and GNSS. She offered consultancy services to two government projects. She is a lifetime member of many professional bodies. With this introduction, I welcome Dr. R. Suja Rose, ma'am, for this session, and I hand over this session to her. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jitin, sir. I, I, you, once, uh, I once again thank uh, Dr. Kannan, who is the head of the Department of Civil Engineering, as well as Francis Xavier College, uh, to invite me to give this uh, lecture in GNSS. Uh, as far as uh, I am considered, I am uh, the head of the department in Madhya Kamraj University, who has completed uh, uh, my PG program in remote sensing as well as my research in uh, uh, remote sensing. And I got the privilege and blessings uh, to continue in the same department as a faculty also. And for the past uh, 15 years, I am there uh, working as a faculty. So anyway, good morning to all, uh, all the participants. I don't want to take uh, much of the time. And others and um, I hope that you would have got a very good sessions for the past two three days in uh, GIS. Today I want to uh, explain you or uh, just introduce you the term uh, GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. I hope all of you can uh, visualize my uh, screen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is it visible? Visible, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Audible, audible. It's audible. So just uh, we will start our session, Global Navigation Satellite Systems. So, uh, first of all, uh, when uh, man was like uh, a nomad, so actually the question of positioning or location was not there because uh, we move from here and there and uh, there is no possible or there is no need of uh, location at that time. But when he started to settle at one place and he, he want, he, when he was in a requirement to again come back to the uh, original place then definitely man was in need of uh, location data. So. At that time, actually, when uh, civilization actually started in the river valleys, in that time itself, what happened is uh, we need to, the many uh, people, they have to return to their uh, own settlements. So when this is the case, when they started to start civilization in the river valleys or in any of the place, actually the uh, requirement of these locations, they uh, came into existence. So that is the place where the location as well as uh, uh, the position of a player individual became very important. So at that time, we had some like uh, caves as prominent places for our location. So like uh, uh, a big uh, landmark. So cave can be a landmark where actually 
the locations uh, we can uh, find out the prominent places as scales and then people start to come back to their places okay so likewise when uh, people went for hunting and when they came back with the hunted material then they have to uh, come back and their time actually the locations they are uh, the landmarks they are needed right so that's why the uh, the need for the location or the need for those uh, things become very important the location as well as the position become very important so uh, uh, in olden days actually the caves as well as the uh, trees so these are these are a prominent landmark by which we can get back to the location wherever we were so uh, starting from the river and the civilization the need for location or the need for the position is become very really, very important so <clears throat> they these prominent landmarks they actually they actually attracted the people back to their location so sometimes landmarks can be caves as well as sometimes the landmarks can be mountains like this very prominent mountains so by keeping these mountains in their mind people they came back to their uh, dwelling places so sometimes you see the trees also becomes a prominent landmarks by which we can uh, come back so this is how uh, the location or the like the positioning of people they uh, started so uh, how so apart from this if you when the accuracy of this positioning became more and more then we need some more methods by which we can come back to the situation so we would have uh, spread like stories like dropping the pebbles and holding the twigs which shows the direction of uh, coming back or uh, the path so that and all uh, made a way by which people came back and they met their uh, relatives so but when this happens in a ocean then it becomes a very big question mark because in ocean actually there is no landmarks like a mountain or uh, uh, anything will not be there completely only up sky and down only water so when this is the case even uh, very big scholars they have lost their uh, way for example uh, we can we will you have heard, heard the story of columbus he has started from uh, started from portuguese and he came uh, in the ocean and he lost his way and he for he again uh, discovered uh, like uh, america so this is also when we are in the ocean these landmarks are not there and sometimes we will get uh, lost so like in the similar manner when we are in very at least of very maybe a uh, mean very dense forest likewise if we are in a desert area definitely you see sometimes there are many chances by which we can lose the way likewise prominent places also will be seen or landmarks prominent landmarks will be seen in certain places only where uh, we can find it out and we can come in back but but not in all the places so if it is like a desert area then uh, then a prominent landmarks also are so very less so and when the population is greater and greater when it becomes more and more when the settlements become denser and denser then again you see the question mark question comes okay so likewise you see we can when we uh, go up, uh, go behind history we can even see in biblical records that some stars also guided people uh, here also three wise men when they started in search of a child jesus only the stars they guided and then they brought out to bethlehem so likewise uh, we, we are having certain history telling that stars also guided people in getting their way so uh, earlier first stone age we can just tell like caves they guided people to come back to their locations then the stars they guided their uh, the people to come back to their location so as we know when we see onto the sky there will be so many stars just following a star and coming back to the location again becomes a question mark and then again the accuracy of the location becomes very uh, is a is, is a required thing, right so like uh, when when this happens in the sea then uh, stars also can help to a certain extent not to not more than that they again uh, in earlier ages they found out a uh, uh, equipment called sextants so these sextants they have a protractor as well as a telescope by which this can be uh, directly seen this uh, we can see the star and using that star as well as the angle these uh, uh, navigation people those who are uh, using the uh, ships they actually guide they are guided to come to the land so sextants are also some equipments or are uh, the equipments which helps uh, help in navigation so mostly in uh, sea navigation in order to get into the land 
So this is the way by which the pre-location started. So starting from getting the like uh, getting the prominent landmarks like a river or a cave or a tree, then going on to the stars, then coming to the sextants, we just started to get our location back. So this is how the history of uh, location started, right? Okay. So nowadays what we do is we are having addresses or landmarks for located place. So when we are just ask like Madurai Kamala University, we just tell that okay Madurai it is located in Madurai in uh, National Highway towards Madurai to Kenny Road. So likewise we will have some addresses or some landmarks which are needed for locating in their place. So but this also becomes a question mark when language comes to a problem. So when uh, when it is written in English or Tamil or a known language then uh, even the, known, the, uh, the landmarks or the notice boards will help us. But when it is like unknown language, definitely it becomes a question mark. So there should be a standardized uh, method by which we can find out our location. So this is where uh, people started to think over. And for the past centuries, they have been thinking over and United States were the first to find out uh, a solution for this. So <clears throat> maybe let us uh, consider the uh, world, uh, globe, which is having nothing. So maybe uh, if you turn up, there will be a sky, and if you turn down, there will be land or water. So when this is the case, uh, the location, how to find out the location, that becomes a question first. Okay. So this is where our, uh, like for example, I'm, here is a table, and in the table I have, a, uh, there is a cup of uh, coffee, right? So just what I do is I just remove this cup of coffee. And if I want to keep it in the same place, in the same location where this uh, 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 cup was there, that becomes a question, right? So this is also where. So if we consider this for the whole world, then what will be the situation there and where it is? So here, what we do is just we put like if I want to put the uh, cup again in the same place, then what I can do? I can draw a graph which shows the x-axis and y-axis. And by that I can have like uh, x, uh, x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 7, 5 comma 7, then maybe I can keep it in the exact place. So this is the idea behind how we can find out the location which is sketch. So here uh, in the whole world or uh, the whole globe is there and in the globe we, can, we are having certain x-axis and y-axis which is called as latitude and longitude which you would have been uh, coming across for, uh, when we are doing GIS. So this is the basic by which we can have the locations, right? So X and Y or latitudes and longitudes or the, or the places where we can locate a exact place in anywhere in the globe, right? So either it can be North Pole or it can be the South Pole or it can be at least of Pacific Ocean. So if we know the latitude and longitude, then locating becomes a very easiest process, right? But this the latitude and longitude. What are latitudes and longitudes? They are actually the imaginary lines which are created in order to find out or in order to locate a place, right? So here actually what happens is this latitude and longitude is drawn in the like, uh, it, it is an imaginary line in this earth, uh, earth sphere, right? And this latitude and longitude, they are the imaginary lines and I can't find any marks in the earth. So there should be a system by which it will show this latitude and longitude so that this can solve all our location requirements, right? So whenever I have a latitude and longitude, if I know numbers, then I can locate anywhere in the world. It, either it can be North Pole, at least of North Pole, or it can be South Pole, or it can be any place, or in at least of jungle also. So if I know the latitude and longitude, irrespective of language, irrespective of landmark, or irrespective of anything, I can find out maybe the location. So this system has to be developed which irrespective of all those it should show the latitude and longitude. So this is the idea behind the global navigation satellite system. So just that was the satellite age you know, from 1970 maybe 1950 onwards it was like uh, the age of satellites. So first the satellites were used for communication purposes then the satellites were used for remote sensing purposes and when they are using it for remote sensing purpose itself, the uh, United States started to, to think over this concept to find out the latitude and longitude of a place 
throughout the globe by using satellites. So now they were thinking like using the satellites for finding out the location or the, uh, the latitude and longitude of the place anywhere in the globe at any time. So irrespective. So maybe the location will be needed in any point of time, maybe in the morning or in the afternoon or in the night I need or in a rainy day I need or in a very stormy time I need. So irrespective of the weather condition and irrespective of day night conditions, I should get the location. So this is how we were thinking like putting a satellite or uh, putting a set of satellites and finding out the location. So this is where the idea of GNSS started first. Okay. So the at what about the accuracy? So earlier you see we will have very spare settlements here and there, and the settlements also will be like uh, maybe like what we see in the photograph. Right? So it will be here and there, and we can very easily find out uh, which settlement is which one. And this is my house, we can very easily find it out. But you see, when in due course of time, what happened? The settlements number increases here also in the second picture also. We can find out the settlement or we can locate the settlements. But the third picture you see, well, this is the case. Then uh, accuracy also differs, right? So uh, in the first picture, in the first photograph, even I can I can have very less accuracy or we can very easily find out the details. But the third picture you see, the accuracy should be more and more. So that means it should be less than a meter accuracy. So very small, small houses which is that then in order to find out a house, then definitely I should have a very accurate one. So it can, the accuracy also should be less than a meter or less than a sub-centimeter level. So with this in mind, they started to develop a uh, develop, uh, global navigation satellite system. So that means it's a, it's a system of satellites which use the latitude and longitude throughout the Earth at any uh, weather conditions. So along with latitude and longitude, altitude also becomes a, a question mark. So altitude it is the height of the place that also becomes a question mark. So there altitude also can be got by using this set of satellites. So today in our lecture, we will just I will uh, just explain to you about the, uh, uh, the satellite navigation systems, the history of the satellite navigation system, and the types of satellite navigation system. In this two hours, I will try to explain you all about these three, and the other topics will be dealt by my colleagues in later sessions. Right? Okay. So what do you mean by global navigation satellite systems? So otherwise, it is called as G N S S. So G stands for global. N stands for navigational, S stands again for satellite, and S stands for systems. So global navigation satellite systems, right? So global, global means it gives the uh, gives the location or position throughout the globe. Okay. So navigation mostly it is used for navigation. It can be either a marine navigation or uh, aviation or or even uh, or even uh, a navigation which is used by us like from one place to other place, right? So this is uh, like a GN, uh, so in, in short, we call it as GNSS, right? So this is actually a collection of satellite-based navigation systems. So that's why it is given like that. So various navigation systems are there. So as far as up to date, if we just speak in 2020, we are having a uh, more number of uh, satellite navigation systems which we Hello, madam. Hello, madam. Hello. Dear participants, Sorry, I got cut. Okay, no, okay, okay.
Okay. So global navigation satellite systems. So these are global. These are a collection of satellite-based navigation systems. Am I audible to everybody? Ma'am, it's audible, ma'am. Ah, yeah, yeah. I think I am audible, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay ma'am. Now, global navigation satellite systems. So these are a collection of satellite-based uh, satellite-based navigation systems because nowadays we are having a lot of uh, navigation systems with us. So many countries are having their own. So it is a all together putting all together comes under uh, global navigation satellite system. So this was earlier, like uh, only the United States were having. So that's why uh, it was earlier called as global positioning system, and nowadays it has been renamed like global navigation satellite systems. So a global positioning system is the one uh, which is have which is uh, with United States, right? And when other countries also started their own global positioning system, then it is uh, referred to as global navigation satellite system. So <clears throat> what is uh, GNSS means? It is a system of satellites that provides a location at a point of the earth at any time under any weather conditions. So whatever the weather or, or whatever be the time or whatever be the point on the earth. So wherever it is, it will give the latitude, longitude and altitude, right? And it will give the location even at inter visibility conditions. So maybe you see in between a building cannot hail or Maybe uh, a, a very big uh, mountain or a very big uh, tree it cannot uh, hinder. So, <clears throat> as this is a satellite based navigation system, there is no problem of intermissibility conditions like uh, uh, normal survey methods. Right? And it will give like a uh, position in urban Kenya. When we are having a very dense urban area, also, we can get the uh, position. So, this is uh, where global navigation systems are. Okay, so here actually when we, we need a bit of geography with it, like find, uh, understanding the latitude and longitude, then it also includes a knowledge of electronics, yeah, in electronic uh, communication engineering, they yeah, work a lot. Then orbital mechanics should be known, uh, maybe by uh, uh, physics people, then atmospheric science uh, people uh, should be uh, there, then geodesic people will be there, later theory, mathematics, adjustment on all people, they have put forth all their efforts and then they have start, started to uh, manufacture or uh, to design a, a satellite by which we can get the location at any place of the earth, right? So this positioning by the satellites, so the positioning or getting the locations of the satellite can be like a global level or it can be regional or it can be local. So this means actually global level means what happens is uh, we can get the location by a single system of navigation satellite, we can get the location at a global basis. So wherever we go, we can use the thing, use uh, a set of satellites and we can find out the location. So global level uh, positioning also can be given to the satellite. Then <clears throat> a regional level satellite uh, positioning like India and maybe like uh, uh, a buffer zone around India. Likewise, maybe it, it, let it be America. If it is America, America and a buffer zone around America. So that becomes like in you know, the regional systems. Then a local, local is like it gives very precise locations, like uh, accurate locations at the local level. So it, it this might be for a country, maybe uh, it, it might be for US or for Russia or for China. So likewise, uh, a single country can have its own uh, local uh, satellite. So nowadays, uh, the as far as up to date, it is just uh, we can just explain like. That the position or the location can be got at uh, got by global level satellites as well as regional level satellites as well as local level satellites, right? So this is uh, how satellites help us in getting the locations. Okay, so here actually global level or the primary source of uh, this location from where regional level has been developed that also works independently. Global level is completely independently, and uh, regional level also they have planned in a it to work independent, but for a region. But this local level or satellite based augmentation systems means these are the augmentation systems which actually depend upon global or regional and then they give very high and accurate positioning at any part of the country. Right? So we will see one by one. 
before going into like uh, the history. So let us see first how uh, how many uh, countries are having their own GPSs. So um, as far as uh, today, uh, six uh, six countries are having their own uh, GPS uh, satellites. Right, United States they were the first to develop. Then Europe, India, China, Russia, and Japan they are having their own uh, GPS satellites. Apart from that, few more countries they are having the local based satellite navigation systems. So these are the uh, countries which are having their own GPS. So uh, so first 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 of all, as I told you, this uh, uh, United States were the first one to think over this. Uh, positioning system by using the satellites, and you see, uh, they were the one to develop GPS, global positioning system, or it is called as Navstar GPS. Navstar GPS means navigation system with time and varying global positioning system. So navigation system, navigation system, we know it gives the latitude and longitude, or and longitude of many place of the earth with time and ranging so there the principle comes the principle by which we are getting the location is depending upon the ranging or ranging in other terms we can tell it is a distance so the distance between the receiver as well as the satellite with respect to that of time right so navigation system with time and ranging global positioning system so uh, they have named it such a way that the principle also comes within the name and simply and normally it is called as gps and this is the first developed, first ever developed uh, satellite navigation systems in the early 1970s, right? Okay. So, now start GPS. It is a satellite-based navigation system. This is mostly developed for Department of Defense, even though the location position is needed by all over, all the population of whoever needs, everybody needs uh, the position as well as location. But initially, this was developed for Department of Defense in order to safeguard themselves and in order to conquer other countries. So in order to conquer other countries or in order to find out the military forces or military camps of other countries, the location of the other countries, that was a very big problem for these people. So in, uh, in order to conquer other countries, they developed this uh, positioning for military purpose. But earlier it was developed and earlier uh, uh, it was not uh, yielding anymore, uh, yielding a lot. So what they did is they just uh, extended the service to other civilian people also, civilian people as well as other people. So mostly the majority people who use uh, uh, GPSs uh, apart from military is the transportation department as well as the aviation department. So they have extended to the aviation department as well as the transportation department for this locations, right? Okay, so this was initially developed for uh, Department of and actually the development itself was in the hands of uh, Department of Defense only for the first uh, initial years. And even uh, United States, they were not United States uh, Department of Defense was not able to spend a lot of uh, a lot of money in their uh, satellites for uh, navigation. So that's why what they did is they ha they had they got the help from the transportation department. And then transportation department together with the military force, they just started to develop uh, the GPS satellite, GPS satellites and its systems. Okay. So again, it was uh, uh, extended to other other uh, uh, fields and other countries also. So beyond following this. Other countries, when they develop itself, they have developed for it, the military as well as for civilian purpose. So this was uh, again, it was uh, developed first for uh, military and then it was extended to civilian. But now it is like a dual, a dual uh, use uh, system, so which can be used for military as well as uh, for civilian uses. So mostly for military as well as for transportation and for aviation department, they get like uh, very precise locations, right? So very precise, accurate. Uh, so military people will be having very high accurate uh, uh, positions, and transportation and aviation department they will have a little bit maybe meters level accuracy. So military will have in centimeters or sub centimeters level accuracy here. It will be like meters like accuracy, and for other civilian purpose it may go in few meters, right? So this is how they have developed and this uh, and now such it is this used like for. Uh, both uh, military as well as for other purposes, right? So in anyway, the development started in 1976, right? Okay, so what uh, what about this thing? It actually provides continuous positioning. So uh, continuous positioning is needed at each, each and every point of time. Like uh, uh, maybe uh, the 24 hours, 24 into 7 basis, I should get the location. Maybe I might be in a ocean or I might be in a, a flying. So wherever 
I am, I should know the location at each and every time. So uh, the location also should be continuous as well as it should be like uh, the timing or it, it gives the location on the basis of time. Right? And if the location will be anywhere in the world under any other conditions and there are unlimited number of users. So nowadays you see whoever is having a GPS phone itself become a user of this GPS. Right? So not only in phones, even our transport, uh, our buses, our uh, fleets, then our uh, cabs, everything are being uh, monitored by this uh, GPS. Right? And so mostly, so there are unlimited number of users. Whoever is having a GPS receiver, so they can, uh, they vary and most of everybody are using, uh, one day or the other we are using the GPS, right? And the only thing is the accuracy uh, by which we use differs. So military people will be having very high accuracy, whereas other geography person or uh, person who is used for mapping will be having a low accuracy, right? So this for security reasons, it was always like the GPS itself is designed in such a way that it is a one way uh, system. One way system in the sense you will have signals only from uh, the satellite to the receiver or not from the receiver to the satellite. Right? So in order to safeguard or you know, because you see when all those comes under the GPS guided then we should be very cautious with the position. So position should be handled only by the control segment and not by everybody. So that's why it has been designed in such a way that it is only one way positioning or one way ranging. So we receive the signals from the satellites alone. But we need not, we, we can't communicate or the users cannot communicate to the satellite. So it has been, uh, it, it is a one way ranging system. So users can only receive the signals and not communicate to that. Right. Okay, so this is the overall uh, view of uh, the NASA GPS. So now, what about the, the constellation? So whether only one satellite is enough for taking the position for the whole world? No, it is not uh, the case because you see when the satellites come around the Earth also, so when it comes to the uh, other side, the uh, remaining side may not be uh, visible. So that's why you see there will be a problem. So each and every point, if it needs to be, uh, if, if, if each and every point should need like uh, the position at each and every time, then there should be 24 number of satellites, right? So that this number is such a way that we can get the position at each part of the globe at every point of time. Okay, so GPS consists nominally on a constellation of 24 number of operational satellites. But the 24 is like theoretical only. So when it came to practical, when this was uh, officially declared itself, the number was greater than 24. Right? So I know also we are having 32 uh, satellites, right? Okay, so uh, even at the initial operational capability when it was uh, a, when it was explained itself at uh, 1993 or 93, that time itself the number exceeded more than 24 number of satellites. But for the whole globe, 24 number of satellites is enough for getting the location of each and every place. Okay, so uh, it started in nine, way back in 1970, and the first satellite was uh, launched in 1978 somewhere. Okay, and the complete 24 number of satellites was launched by 1993, and it was uh, announced that it can be used by everybody. So how this 24 satellites they are? Uh, located on the Earth, Earth's surface. Okay, so uh, for a worldwide coverage, so mainly for ensuring a continuous worldwide coverage, these satellites, these 24 satellites are uh, kept in six orbitals. Six orbital planes will be there. So 360 degrees, six into six, right? 36, 360 degrees. So in this 30, uh, six orbitals, each orbital will be having the satellites, 24 satellites. Okay. So 24 satellites, right? So the geometry in such a way that a minimum of four satellites as well as four, a minimum of four up to ten satellites will be visible in anywhere of the in, in anywhere in the world, right? So whenever uh, at any part of the earth, if you are, when we just look over uh, at the sky, you will get a uh, maybe you will get minimum four as well as ten satellites in your view. Right, in our mission. So this is how the geometry of the satellites has been set in the uh, set in above, I mean, around the earth. 
and it has been okay. so but uh, why four four i just explain why it is four so four satellites are needed or needed for getting the position or location information so wherever we need a position or uh, the location is needed we need a minimum of four satellites and it can be more than that okay so more and more the satellites more and more accuracy as well as more and more easily we can finish our survey right okay? so that is the uh, uh, logic behind that okay so but minimum of four is needed otherwise we have to wait in that uh, place till you get the like four satellites are visible and get the position right okay. so this is how uh, it is uh, seen uh, around the earth like uh, there are six orbiters one two three four five six it is named as a b c d and e right so uh, the orbitals is named in such a manner and they come around the uh, things in a circular orbit and this is how the satellite works it has a solar panel with the l band antenna as well as l band antenna and the s band link is used to get the information from the control station and the l band antenna is used to uh, send the information right so this is a gif which is showing how uh, the satellites come around uh, the earth and uh, how many satellites will be visible at each part of the globe so you can see you see the visible number of satellites they vary and be from 6 11 12 or maybe sometimes in they come to 5 or also right but a minimum of four satellites will be visible at each and every point of the time in the earth, right so uh, maybe maybe for example if it is a four satellite if you if four satellites are visible the uh, the signal from four satellites will reach the receiver and the receiver will decode the signals by which we will get the uh, x y and z okay so <clears throat> about uh, gps means this gps satellites they are nearly circular in orbit so the inclination angle is 55 degree to the equator and the semi major axis is about 26560 km so at which distance this orbitals are set us is around 20000 km so for gps it is 20200 km and for the other navigation systems it is uh, slightly greater or lesser so on an average we can have it in mind that these gps satellites are located at 20000 km above the earth surface right okay so uh, whereas remote sensing satellites they are located below 1000 km right so below 1000 km you will have remote sensing satellites and above 36000 you will have a communication satellites right and in between these two in between remote sensing as well as the communication satellites at a height of about 20000 km we have this gps satellites and in uh, uh, 20200 km above the earth's uh, surface we have this uh, gps satellites and it may vary with other uh, constellations right and this gps orbital period is around uh, 12, 12 uh, hours so it comes around the same place or it comes above the same place twice a day right so twice a day it will come around uh, this uh, uh, the area and uh, we can see approximately 11 hours 58 minutes right so you will have a two minutes a small increment of two minutes this minutes will be uh, will be kept like uh, it, yeah this increment minutes will be kept and usually the clock will be reset on uh, in june july uh, night uh, june I mean, maybe uh, june july night as well as december january night so once in six months usually this increment uh, uh, time it may be set right for this uh, gps satellites right so because uh, we should be very careful here because uh, all the ranging it is explained in terms of time it is and time also it is in terms of delta t delta t in the sense delta stands for very little right a very small time difference because gps signals they travel at the speed of light right so speed speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second so gps signals also travels with the same velocity right it's with the same speed it actually travels and there will be a change mean that will be in terms of delta t which is equal to nanoseconds right because 3 to 10 to the power 8 so uh, beyond 8 only you will have like uh, 3 put 8 uh, zeros beyond that only we will have the change right so the change will be in delta t so the time taken by the signal to start from the satellite and reach the receiver so that time delta t that 
uh, gives you the distance between the satellite as well as the receiver right so uh, time is very very important here so that's why all the gps satellites will be having atomic clocks so these atomic clocks will tell you the time in uh, nanoseconds and nanosecond time is taken for getting the range between the uh, receiver or uh, range between the satellite receiver satellite as well as the receiver okay so uh, anyway this increment time will be set in every 6 months now. okay so this is actually uh, declared uh, as operation in 1995 and you see uh in in well, in 1995 itself we have more than 24 number of satellites which will give you the location in each and every part of the globe right okay. so in this uh, gps uh, satellites gps constellation or the gps uh, uh, itself it has three segments one is base segment second one is control segment and the third one is user segment so i will just touch upon uh, with my one or two slides and this i will go on to the history so this will be dealt in other classes right so the space segment the space segment is the satellite as well as the signal then the control segment is the place where it controls who controls this uh, uh, gps satellite and the user segment is the people whoever you have a receiver so it can uh, the receiver can range like from 1000 rupees up to uh, crores right so maybe 10 crores or 20 crores also is there uh, the receiver so the range uh, yeah, from 1000 to 20 crores you will have uh, a variety range of gps receivers and whoever uses this receiver directly or indirectly becomes the user segment so we will uh, see like uh, the space segment is the satellite maybe we can have like 24 plus satellites so this is for gps systems right so gps now star gps has 24 plus satellites and the signal right so signal so which uh, comes here and we will have the control segment so the control segment is having an antenna as well as they are having their own office here and there i will just explain and the user segment so this control segment is the one who control the space segment as well as the signals and what to be done and what not to be done will be completely decided by this control segment and the user segment whoever uses the major user is the military people then comes your uh, navigation people then the aviation people then our transportation people and nowadays we use it for research also so many researches are also going on so which will be detailed uh, detailed uh, or detailed explain to you in the application uh, session right then coming to the space segment so the space, uh, space segment it consists of 24 uh, number minimum 24 number of satellites and it also transmits a signal so this is the initial components right so uh, the initial uh, so when we when the satellite has been designed the it has been designed with, uh, the signal has been designed with five components two sine waves two digital ports as well as one navigation message but when uh, days pass on and when the requirement is also increased they have added more carrier wave uh, carrier waves as well as digital ports right okay so but for the time being the first initiation or the first starting uh, was done by five signals right or uh, five components of a signal so there were two sine waves which are uh, known as the carrier waves they are the sine waves uh, and the two digital ports there you see uh, two digital ports will be there one 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 port is called as ca code and the other one is b code CA code is the course acquisition code, and P code is the precise code. Right? And CA code, they are nothing but the zeros and ones which come in the sequence of digits. Right? So a, a long sequence of digits. And these sine waves, the carrier waves, they are having two frequencies, like like L1 and L2. And later on, L5 also also added. L5 was added, then L1 also was added. Right. So that in due course of time, but initially it was like two sine waves with the L1 and L2 frequencies. They have different frequencies as well as different wavelength, right? And the, the different frequency and different wavelength. Why two uh, carrier waves? Because this uh, satellite, as we have discussed, it is placed at 24, I mean, uh, 20,000 uh, kilometers above Earth's surface. So when this is uh, placed there, what happens is the signal has to pass on through this 20200 kilometers atmosphere right so when it tra travels through the atmosphere again the signal is a very weak radio signal and this signal gets affected by 
the atmosphere. So they are mainly by ionosphere, right? So the uppermost part of the atmosphere is ionosphere. There you will have charged particles. The positively charged as well as negatively charged particles. And these particles, they vary with time, right? So yeah, maybe in the morning the charged particles will be lesser and in the afternoon you will have a greater particle, number of particles and in the evening you will have less. So it varies with the time of the day and it varies with the season and it varies with the revolution of the earth also. So accordingly the charged particles they vary, they, 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 they vary and they vary. So what happens is it will, it will delay the signals, right? So the signals from the satellites they reach the uh, 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 they reach the surface passing through this atmosphere. When it passes through this atmosphere, it actually gets uh, delayed. So this delayed this delayed signals has to be very well noted down in order to rectify the uh, errors. So uh, definitely we uh, maybe in the next hour, uh, third session you will uh, discuss about the errors where you will have nearly 30 to 15 errors in the GPS signal. So there are so many errors are there. All those errors has to be removed. So one of the major errors is ionospheric delay. Right? So this ionospheric delay will be, uh, has to be removed. So for that, for that purpose, we are having two signals, right? So two uh, waves which is having different wavelength at different frequencies. Right? So anyway, these wavelengths, they are very much important, or these carrier waves, they are very much important to carry the digital code sensors navigation message also. So they are the carrier waves, as the name says, they actually carry the uh, digital codes as well as the navigation message by means of biphase modulation, and binary biphase modulation method, right? So the digital codes are again, uh, again, uh, they are two in number, like uh, force acquisition, CA code, as well as P code, precise code, right? And these codes are also uh, a stream of binary digits, zeros and ones, which can be decoded by the receiver, right? So they are also used for, um, not only they are used for finding out the range, the delta t, right? Sine waves also can be used to find out the delta t, the uh, change in the time. So the range also can be found out by using sine waves as well as the digital codes. And navigation message details about the, they actually tell about the uh, satellite clock and other parameters, whatever has to be communicated to the users. Okay, so this is what uh, the GPS um, uh, space component. Then coming to the signals, so this I am not going into detail, right? So I just I will uh, give you the glimpse of what is there. So the carriers and the ports they are used used mainly to find out the determine the distance between the user as well as users receiver as well as the GPS satellites. The navigation message along with other main information they contain the coordinates of the satellite. So the coordinates of the satellite is very much important as a function of time. Because satellite is also moving, Earth is also moving. So we should know the coordinate, the coordinate of the satellite as a capital X0, Y0 as at a function of time meaning, right? So when knowing that only, we can find out the distance. So the distance like when the location of the satellite is known and the distance by which the signal has been uh, travel is known, then we can find out this unknown uh, latitude and longitude right, of the receiver. So this is the uh, idea behind using this uh, ranges, right? So the satellite location as well as the distance traveled by the signal has to be known in order to find out the location of the satellites, okay? So the transmitter signals are controlled by highly accurate atomic clocks which is there in the satellite. So the satellites will be having high range at atomic clocks mostly of rubidium clock or CTM clock, which will tell you that, which will tell the time, right? And this time will come along with the navigation message, the coordinates of the satellites, so we'll give you the location. Then coming to the sun control segment, the control segment uh, consists of, so whatever let it be, like, it, it can be the GPS mode by um, US or it can be a GPS mode by India or it can be a GPS mode by China, whatever let it be, these three segments will be there, uh, uh, space segment, a uh, control segment, as well as the user segment. So this control segment will be with the country, which is owning the GPS satellites, okay. So the control segment is completely controlled by the uh, country alone. So um, if we see, they will be under the, for example, if it is now start GPS, it will be completely under the control of uh, United States, right. So the control segment of the GPS consists of a worldwide network of tracking stations because, you see, uh, wherever we are having the satellites, 24 number of satellites 
in six orbitals so in six orbitals in a semicircular orbit it comes around the earth okay so what happens is wherever the satellite is it should be under our control so there will be a set of monitoring stations throughout the globe which monitor this uh, satellites very keenly right so they monitor each and every second the satellites uh, behavior right and the clocks behavior also so a worldwide network of tracking stations are there and a master control station which is located at uh, the united states right colorado springs and colorado so this is the place where the master control station for gps is there right now start gps and all these worldwide network of tracking stations as well as the monitoring stations then the ground control stations everybody will be under the control of master control station Right? And all others are unmanned. There will be no people there. Only remotely they will operate from the master control station. Okay. So this is how they secure their nation's uh, location uh, location data. Right. So this is with Colorado Springs. Then what the control segment means? So you track the GPS satellites in order to determine or predict the satellite location. They the they they actually they track the satellites. Okay. And then they will predict the location. At, at the next minute where the satellite should be, they will predict and then they will give it to the satellite again by the S band, right? Okay. So then the system integrity, how the satellites, all 24 satellites work, and how the tracking stations they track and how it is brought to here, everything is the uh, the system, whole system is integrated or uh, integrity is maintained in control segment. Then the behavior of the satellite atomic clocks also. So sometimes you see the clocks. Uh, after administering, it may have some problems, so it has to be completely monitored, right? So this uh, monitoring uh, will be done by this master control station. Then finding out the atmospheric data. So we know that uh, if when the signal travels, uh, yeah, it has to pass through the atmosphere, and there will be a delay also. And all those uh, delay and everything has to be communicated to the users. So the atmospheric data also will come along the navigation message. And I am moreover, uh, if, the, if there is a problem in the satellite, that also has to be communicated. Then if the monitoring stations also should be handled. So all those is the work of a uh, work of this control segment. Right? So the control segment takes care of all those. Okay, and it will be given. And the satellite almanac, satellite calendar, whatever. If there is 24 plus satellites. All the 24 plus satellites, how it moves and how it comes around, and what about uh, their location at the next second. So, all those will be maintained by the control segment, right? And this control segment is, it is working at a 24 hour basis uh, and it takes care of all the purposes, okay? And it is uploaded to the whatever information has to be uh, given to the users will be uploaded as well in the navigation message and should be disseminated to the Users, right? So uh, when we think about control sites, uh, there is a master control station which is located at Colorado Springs. Then we are having worldwide network of monitoring stations. So there are uh, six monitoring stations and then there are ground control stations also. So this uh, master control station is located at Colorado Springs which is a central processing facility and it is there, it works in 24 hour spaces. Right? Then there are six monitoring stations. One is located at Colorado Springs itself, and then the others we can see it is located at Hawaii, Kwajalein, Diego Garcia, Ascension Island, and Cape Canaveral. So these are the uh, islands which are located at various parts of the globe, right? In the Pacific Ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, in the Indian Ocean, as well as in uh, America, it is there, right? So we can see the in the next slide about the picture. Okay. So this position of these uh, uh, monitoring stations are very precisely known. So very precisely they find they keep the position or the location of that uh, place. And what happens is if there is any change in this location, it means that is, there is a change in the satellite, right? So there is a change in the satellite position. So this is how they actually model and then they give it to the disseminate it to the users, right? Okay. So this is the uh, map showing all the uh, control stations of our monitoring stations here in Hawaii, then Ascension Island, Diego Garcia, then Kwajalein. Right. So apart from this, we can have one more at Cape Canaveral and in Colorado Springs. So this and there are uh, three more stations: Ascension Island, Diego Garcia, and Kwajalein, where you can have the ground antenna. This ground antenna is used to communicate the information from the master control station to the 
satellites. Okay, and each and every satellite passes uh, through this uh, station at least once a day. So what happens is, uh, uh, maybe at least twice a day, so that this information will be gathered in the satellite and it will be there in the satellite. Okay, and it will come along with the navigation message. Right? Okay, so here coming to the control sites. Uh, what are the facilities at monitoring stations? So, so in each uh, facility, each uh, monitoring station will be having a very high quality receiver with the CCM oscillator, right? So a CCM oscillator for continuously tracking the GPS satellites. So monitoring stations is having a very good GPS receiver and the location of this receiver is very well, uh, very well and precisely known so that they monitor the station. Okay. And uh, they are used for uploading the information also, so that the ground control, uh, um, I mean, antenna will be there in order to upload the information as a yes band, right? Okay. So this is all the monitoring stations. They are unmanned. There will be no people working, but they will be uh, they will be controlled by the master control station, right? So they are remotely operated from the master control stations. So the, they are um, they, uh, this information which is collected to, by the monitor stations also will be sent to the master control station. And in master control station, they sit and they process and then they will uh, communicate to each other. Right? Okay. So what are the information? So what are the information needed is like you see uh, the uh, satellite navigation data or we call it as satellite almanac or in other words, it's a little bit of ephemeris data. Right? Ephemeris data is the one thing. Then the satellite position, as I have already discussed, it is the capital X0, Y0, the uh, satellite position, position of each and every satellite, like 24 plus satellites, at a function of time. As a function of time, it should be there. Then satellite clock parameters. So satellite clock in the sense, it can be rubidium clock or cesium clock. Sometimes the rubidium clock or cesium clock may malfunction. And that malfunctioning information also will be given by with this navigation data. So whenever our receiver they decodes, they actually will uh, will omit the satellites which is unhealthy, and then the healthy satellites uh, data only alone will be taken for the calculation of the location. Right? Okay. Then atmospheric data and others. So this fresh navigation data is sent to the ground control station, and it is uploaded to the uh, satellites through this Right? Okay. So the master control station there are other functions also. They monitor the system integrity, then they find out like uh, the unhealthy condition of the satellites, and sometimes uh, the satellites might be their uh, malfunctioning. So what happens is, in, uh, in order to set right that, till the satellite gets set right, what they will do, they will uh, communicate with the users like this satellite is unhealthy. So we will come along the navigation message so that the so that the uh, so that the, the satellite information is not taken into consideration, right? So they are not taken into consideration. So uh, for the, for uh, locating, what happens is um, uh, the navigation message itself it will come that this uh, satellite is not working well or the clock in the satellite is not working well. So that what will happen is when decoding itself. This message will not get decoded. The signals will not get decoded. Okay. So the satellite health condition, which is uh, it appears on a real-time basis, so it should be given to all the users. And as I told you, there is a small, uh, like uh, uh, two two second, uh, um, I mean two minutes is there, no? So that uh, two minute uh, increment seconds also, or increment minutes also will be kept in nano. So the notice advisory for uh, NASTAR users. So there it will be kept and if we need very precise location, if users, anybody needs very precise locations, we can get that uh, increment seconds also from there and we can do the processing and get a very accurate data. Right? So this all, all will be reported to the station. Okay. Then the user segment. So those who, uh, those who uh, whoever has this um, receiver, becomes the user segment. Receivers can range a lot. So from the start, starting from simple carbon GPS up to very high level uh, GPS which is used for military, uh, it is used. Right? So uh, receivers or users, they uh, they uh, vary a lot. Right? So according to our use, we can purchase the receiver and according to the use as well as according to how much accuracy I should get, I accordingly I have. We have to purchase the user, uh, the receiver. Okay, and the receiver actually, uh, the GPS is uh, GPS signals are free of cost. 
no charges directly levied, but it will be there in the receiver. I mean, when we are purchasing our receiver itself, what is the type? So for that, we have to pay, right? So indirectly, it is paid, but uh, directly, any user never uh, pays, uh, look, uh, uh, pays for the getting her location, her or her uh, this location, right? So, and uh, the receivers, they may vary. And um, only few receivers I have shown here, there are a number of receivers, a uh, number of models uh, of receivers which gives us the location. Right? Okay. Now, how uh, GPS, uh, NASA GPS is developed, development, how it started. So, way back, so way back in 1970s onwards, uh, 73 onwards, they have started to work on it. And uh, the first uh, set of satellites, they were known as Block 1 satellites. So the first set of satellites are called as Block 1 satellites. Here actually 11 number of satellites were uh, launched into the space. So these were completely experimental setups. So Block 1 satellites are the first set of navigation satellites which has been sent into the space. Right. So this Block 1 satellites, they were completely used for an experimental purpose and they have checked that whether we will get the uh, location at every day and how the location, how much accuracy is it, whether it is okay with the six orbitals. So these are the questions which has been answered by this experimental process, right? So actually this was like uh, the first, uh, it was 63 degrees. So the inclination angle with that of the equator was 63 degrees. Then they found out that this will not work and then in the second generation onwards they have reduced it to 55 degrees and it has been set, right? So this uh, defined the design lifetime was for 5 years alone and uh, with that design lifetime they have sent the satellites and some satellites they extended for more than 10 years also. So usually satellites they will be having its own defined design lifetime. So design lifetime will be the minimum lifetime which we can have the satellites there according to which we calculate uh, the cost effect or uh, cost benefit. Sometimes these satellites will be there in the orbit maybe they will function very well and it will be there in the orbit for more than the design lifetime also accordingly more than 10 years also was there in the orbit okay and the first uh, uh, block on satellites was taken out of service in 1995 right so how they take out of services they just push on to the uh, to another uh, orbit right so they will push uh, maybe a thousand kilometers apart they push push so that they go beyond the orbit and then they lose their control Right. So, like was it was taken out of service in 1995. So, the first satellite was launched in 78, and the last satellite, the last satellite was launched in 1985. So, this is how they have completed the experimental setup of GPS satellites. Right. Then coming the coming to the block two and block two A satellites. So, these are uh, uh, block two. They are the second generation satellites. So, here actually what happened is here they have increased the uh, navigation message data storage capability. So this is otherwise known as ephemeris data. Ephemeris data in the sense this is the satellite clock or what we call the satellite almanac, uh, satellite calendar. So at this specific time where the satellite. So here the orbital mechanism of the orbital data of the satellite will be there. So this was actually 14 days for block 2 satellites whereas it has been extended to 180 days for block 2 A. Right. So for um, so the data storage capability was increased, right? It was increased from 14 days to 180 days. So here, uh, that, um, that means, so the satellite can be in the orbit without communicating to the ground uh, station for 14 days. Whereas in block 2A, it will remain in the orbit for 180 days. So there is a less chance of losing the satellites, right? So this is where the, uh, the advanced version has been introduced, right? So block 2 and block 2A, they can, uh, they can uh, function continuously without ground support for a period of 14 and 18 days, right? Okay, so here the um, satellites was, there were 28 number of satellites. So first generation was 11 satellites and in the second generation was 28 satellites, right? So they were launched from 1989 to 1997, right? So in between itself, we have uh, reached the full operational capability and in 1993, the, uh, the president, he declared that this is open and everybody can use it. Right? Okay. So anyway, in block 2 and block 3, as I told you, the inclination angle was reduced to 55 degrees from 63 degrees. And the lifetime, the lifetime also was increased to 7.5 years. Right? Okay, 7.5 years. So from 4.5, it was increased to 7.5 years. 
So the design item itself was increased. So anyway, this happens, they remain in the orbit more than 15 years. Okay. So that is one thing. And the importance of the second generation satellite is to ensure national security. This is very important point. They did some security features like their selective availability and anti scoping was added. Right? So this is the importance of this block two satellites or generation two satellites. This anti scoping as well as selective availability. So this is this became a question mark for other nations. Right? So what what the thing is. GPS was owned by US. So US needs the very precise data, but not other countries. So what they did is they in order to secure to secure the location data, they made selective availability. Selective availability is like the course acquisition code will be uh, available for everybody, for every users, but the precise code will be used only by military people. So like this. So this is the way by way by which they have secured the Signals. So others will get less precise data, whereas US military people alone will have precise data. So that is where they check was made. So that is selective availability. And anti spoofing. Anti spoofing is a method by which encrypting the code, right? So encrypting the code with a known uh, W code to form P1 code. So what happens is that the encryption node will be, uh, encryption code will be known only by the authorized users, not unauthorized users. Right? So that process is called as anti -speaking. So these two security features has been added to this block 2 and block 3A satellites. One is selective availability and other one is anti -speaking. So anti spoofing is the encryption of the code and selective availability is making few codes available and the, uh, making one code available and other code not available to unauthorized users. So these two security features was added to the block 2 satellites. Right? Okay. Then coming to the block 3 satellites or uh, the next generation satellites, they are called as block 2 R. R stands for replenishments. Replenishment satellites uh, will be compatible to both uh, block 1A, that means can be used by everybody because already we have uh, we have attained like full operational capability. So these uh, block 2 R satellites were uh, launched, they are 21A number, and the design lifetime was uh, increased to 10 years more. Uh, to 10 years. Right? And you see, this uh, there, this satellites, they can remain in orbit. A lot of our satellites can remain in orbit for a period of 210 days. So, uh, 210 days, and it may not have a control uh, with the ground station. So, uh, and it can move in its own orbit. So, this is how the block 2 our satellites have been generated. And uh, in block 2 R, also the last 12 satellites, they they, they are having modernization program details also, so which can be dealt in the signal structure class. Okay, so here in modernization program, I told you initially it was five components in GPS signals, but uh, in modernization program, two three components were also added, like uh, one or two uh, two carrier waves as well as one ports were added later. So this addition of this modernization program was added to the last twelve satellites of block two R, right? So this is uh, about the block 2 R satellites, right? And then coming to block 2 F satellites, uh, block 2 F stands for F stands for follow on, where R stands for replenishment, right? Block 2 F satellites, they have uh, 33 satellites, and the lifetime is uh, 10 years. Again, they have increased. And this is the satellite we launched now, as well as block 2, uh, block 3 satellites have also been launched. So this is how the satellite generations they have developed by US, starting from block 1, which is the experimental set of satellites, up to block 2, we have follow-on satellites. And now we are in the age of uh, block 3 satellites, okay, and current GPS constellation, how many satellites are there now in the space, so this can be easily browsed and got, got, okay, and now we are having, as on July 12, 2020, we are having 34 satellites on space. So we can see, you see, all the level, all the block 1 satellites, uh, they are not, uh, uh, they have been removed from the orbit, then block 2 and block 3A have also been removed. Only 12 uh, block 2 R satellites is remaining in the orbit. And I told you, <coughs> block 2 R uh, is having some uh, features, right? M, M stands for military. So military features was added to this block 2 R, final 12 satellites of block 2 R, out of its is there in the uh, orbit. Okay, then uh, block 2 F satellites is also there, uh, 12 satellites are there, then block uh, 3A is the satellite which we are launching now. So there are three satellites have been launched and Block 2F is the uh, future satellites which we are going to launch. So we have planned 22 
satellites for them. So accordingly, there are uh, 34 number of satellites, but 24 number of satellites is needed for getting the location at any part of the world. The others are spare satellites, or we can get more number of satellites so that uh, survey becomes very easy. Right. So this is uh, this uh, it's, uh, this uh, table actually why I have put this. How do we identify the GPS constellation? Right. When we uh, when we switch on our uh, GPS receivers, we can see the sky plot. If you see the sky plot, if you put uh, the sky plot on, you will have a such number of numbers like this. Uh, this type of numbers you can uh, come across. So what does this mean? So this two means to block two, right? Block two, block two R. Mm, block to A, let's go like this. Then the, this stands to the number of satellites, the number from 1, 2, 3, 4, like this, right? And SVN number is the space vehicle number. So this is given, uh, this is identical for each and every satellite of the GPS. Then this one is PRL code. PRL stands for pseudo random noise. Pseudo random noise means it is the part of P code. So, P code, I told you, it is a sequence of zeros and ones, and these zeros and ones is a very long digit, so a long sequence of digits, which actually repeats in once in 266 days, right? So, it repeats once in 266 days. So, each segment will have one week duration, right? So, one segment will have one, say, one week duration. So, it comes around nearly 37 segments. So, this one week duration is called as pseudo random noise. So, Today, if one satellite has like uh, a PRL code of 23, right? One satellite has a PRL code of 23. Then next week, it will have some other number, right? It will have maybe 40, right? So this is the PRL code, which will change. So P code, usually it changes, but being on a weekly basis, maybe in Saturday, Sunday night, usually this changes, right? PRL codes. Then orbital plane, we know, I told you, there are six orbitals plane, A to E, and uh, there, you will have uh, four, five, four, five satellites. So number one, number two, number three, which is given there. And the clock, I told you, two types of clocks are there, cesium and rubidium, which uh, maintains the time. Actually, I told you, all the range is being calculated by delta T, and the precise location in terms of nanoseconds should be known by the uh, clock. Right? Oh. The, the, uh, the basic idea by the CPS is how the locations are. So first we have uh, come across like why there is a need of location, then the, uh, the accuracy of location we have uh, dealt, then I told you about the, like the history, how the GPS has been developed, and the basic uh, segments in GPS we have discussed so far. And we will just pass on to the basic idea. So the basic idea is very simple, it is the concept of recession. So the concept of recession is used to find out the range of the uh, satellite or the uh, distance between the satellite as well as the receiver. So, what happens is each GPS satellite it handles it transmits a microwave radio signal, right? So it transmits a microwave radio signal which is composed of five components, right? So this signal it will start from the satellite at a specific time, right? And it will travel with the speed of light, maybe 10 to the power 8 meters per second. It will travel and it will reach the uh, receiver at a specific time, right? So that time will be in nanoseconds. So as soon as it reaches the receiver, the receiver will decode the signals and to find out how much delta T it has taken, right? So how much time it has taken this signal to start from the satellite and reach the receiver, right? So for this, the main uh, important thing is the clock of this GPS receiver as well as the clock of the satellite has to be synchronized, right? So it will be synchronized always. Whenever we put on our GPS receiver, when we put, when we take our GPS receiver out and when we just put on, definitely first thing is it synchronizes the clock. Then it will find out the signal. So everything uh, takes place in seconds, in seconds, right? So it will just find out the delta T. And now again, navigation message will be there received by the receiver. So this navigation message will have the satellite coordinates, X0, Y0, capital X0, capital Y0 in its mind. So it will be there in the navigation signal, uh, navigation message. Then by taking the X0, Y0 with reference to that of the timing, as well as the distance traveled from the, for the, for, for the signal from the satellite to the receiver will be taken into account so that this x1, y1 will be calculated. x1, y1 refers to the 
latitude and longitude of the receiver. Right. So for this, here we need x1, y1 means it stands for latitude and longitude, and uh, and we have the altitude also. Altitude terms is z. Right. So we need here there are three unknown quantities. Right. X, y, and z. So when three unknown quantities are known, there we need three linear equations. Right. So this is the simple uh, linear solving of linear equations. So we need three equations. Right. So the fourth equation is needed for the time parameter. I told you delta t. Everything is depend upon the delta t time. So x zero y zero is also uh, reference to time. Uh, the time taken by the signal also refers to time, and it reaches the uh, receiver also depends upon time. So, in order to rectify the time parameter, fourth satellite is needed. Uh, the fourth equation is needed. So that's why you need four linear equations to find out the four unknown parameters, uh, three unknown parameters in the sense latitude, longitude, and altitude, plus the fourth one is the time. Okay. So this is how uh, the satellite uh, works. Maybe uh, at this point, at this uh, point in the Earth, we are having the receiver, right? And there are three satellites, right? R1, R2, and R3 satellites. Yes, uh, maybe we can have this. Yes, one, yes, two, and yes, three. And the signal taken from the satellite, yes, one, to reach the receiver. So that. Time is taken into consideration, and the range, that is, the distance between the satellite, becomes the radius, right? So radius of this big circle, right? So the radius of this big circle, so that becomes R1, right? Then the satellite choose there, there also the same thing happens, but the receiver is at the same place because we are having one receiver. The same receiver receives the signal from the satellite two, right? Satellite two. And that distance, that range is known as R2, and from satellite three, that is known as R3. So now what happens is, so now the, let us consider this is the satellite, and this is the range, right? And second satellite comes, and that is the range. So now it intersects, right? So when it intersects, it may be in any one or any two points. So it can be either here or either here. The receiver. So, in order to bring to one point, we need we we need to go for the third satellite, right? So, the third satellite again range is found out and it intersects at the at one point, right? So, R three. So, now what happens? This R three or based upon this R one, R two, and R three, as well as if we consider the satellite one, then this becomes the capital X zero Y zero of satellite one. Capital X zero Y zero of satellite two and capital X zero Y zero of satellite three, right? So based upon this uh, coordinates as well as the range or the radius or uh, the range uh, or the distance between the satellite as well as the receiver, we can find out the X one Y one, right? X one Y one and Z one. So this is the concept behind any GPS receivers. Okay, any GPS receivers. So <clears throat> the third one, the fourth satellite is used for the receiver range parameters. So when this is the when it is under selector availability, uh, there was like there was like a hundred meters uh, for horizontal component and one fifty six meters for vertical component. Vertical component is Z. So this is the range, right? So this is the accuracy which we got earlier. Right? So but what happened is selector availability was terminated. Because what happened is by using uh, the carrier waves or the L1 and L2 frequencies itself, we were able to get more uh, accurate or precise locations. Then there was no meaning in having select availability. So President Reagan he actually uh, terminated in 2003. It seems he terminated the uh, select availability. So after that, the uh, accuracy was like 22 meters. So from 100 meters, it has become 22 meters, right? And again, it was improved. So, like uh, when we are using two GPS receivers, then it can be improved a lot. And now we have attained like sub centimeter level accuracies. Okay. So, this is uh, so like uh, see, uh, in order to further improve uh, the differential method of using uh, the receivers has come into existence. So, like we, we can use two receivers, right? So, one at known location and other one at, uh, at unknown location. So, when this is the case, then differential method can be done and we can get rid of so many errors. So I told you for 13, 13 to 15 errors are there. So almost all the errors can be 
rectified by this method and all, so that we can get very accurate uh, position so that it stands like uh, sub centimeter. Okay, so which is required to get now, right? So coming to the uh, uses of uh, GPSs, right? So it can, it can be used for uh, finding out the determination of the user's velocity at how much speed we go. Right, uh, like for uh, transportation, usually they will be having like lane, lane of 30 km speed, 50 km speed, 80 km speed, and maybe above 150 km speed. So those who are traveling in 50 km speed have to travel at 50 km speed alone. So this velocity is being monitored by using GPS. So this is uh, uh, this is by using the Doppler method. So usually this uh, thing is done, and we can see the attitude of the rigid body also. So what, how the rigid body, for example, if there is a like, uh, leaning power of Pisa. So this uh, power, Pisa is actually leaning with the field and how much it leans. So how much, so that can be very well uh, modeled by the CPS. Likewise, if there is a bridge, so if there is a bridge, if we, if we need to uh, find out the stability of the bridge, how the bridge is stable. So we can just put, put the GPS receivers over there and uh, we can find out how much uh, Stable the receivers is uh, the stable the bridges how much it is uh, vibrating so likewise the users are uh, I think I uh, may not go in detail so maybe there will be some other faculty who will explain the application part so these are the major applications which is used apart from military navigation and aviation these are the normal applications which we use uh, okay so coming to the uh, positioning services like uh, there are two positioning services mostly whenever we take a GPS. One will be precise positioning, which is used for authorized users, and the other one is standard positioning service, which is used for everybody. So usually this happens, and uh, this is only for military purpose as well as for uh, secure for national security. Right? So GPS was also having the same uh, same idea, like having a precise positioning service and standard positioning service. So precise positioning service, it was like uh, it is uh, used only for authorized users. It is mostly for US military force. And here the positioning was uh, uh, like 16 meters for a single standalone GPS. But when we are using uh, differential method or real time dynamic method, then we will get more average. Whereas uh, standard positioning service is uh, used for so many other users also. So this was 100 meters, it is given, but uh, after uh, this uh, selective availability and handy speaking was made off, then it came to 22 meters. So it has some, uh, it, uh, GPS is, is used in every place, right? It is uh, used in uh, so many uh, applications. And now what we tell it is as, as for the future, the number of GPS applications will be limited only to one's imagination. So this is what uh, uh, we are now expecting, right? So it can be, uh, it is our, our own imagination, it depends. So even nowadays we, are, we can use for uh, modeling, model the uh, number of uh, charged particles in the atmosphere. So how much charged particles are there in the atmosphere and how, how it varies. So likewise, uh, after that uh, research is going on in weather, in uh, pollution studies, in so many others also we are using this uh, uh, GPSs. So mostly here, uh, we place, uh, it has now replaced almost, we place most of the conventional methods of surveying because here there is uh, no problem of weather, no problem of intelligibility. And uh, it is very easy for our surveyor to take uh, take. And moreover, it is very much easy to integrate it with other JS uh, uh, applications, right? If, uh, so if you have satellite data, communication data, then JS uh, or any number of uh, team maps. So it is very easy for us to integrate the GPS with that of the other applications. So it, uh, so it is uh, actually time saving method also. When we are using real time dynamic uh, GPS, after stretch, you see, when you put your receiver on, you can get very precise data, so that precise location. So that means, you see, it can be used in uh, so many applications. And nowadays, we even see like uh, like the driverless cars. So even for driving driverless uh, cars, uh, even this uh, GPS receivers, they are used, right? And um, even uh, uh, moreover, one uh, the final point we have to concentrate is it can be used in urban canyons also because it can be integrated with other conventional equipment. Right? If you have maybe maybe in urban canyon or within the building, inside the building also, if you want to go and survey, then we can use this uh, GPSs because it can be integrated with laser range finders, RLRs, so laser range finders, then pseudolites, even in mining. So in mining, they're using pseudolites. So by using pseudolites uh, and GPSs, we can combine 
we can uh, both can be interviewed and we can use it under mines also. So likewise, applications uh, there, yeah. right? So they have a land, marine, and uh, navigation. So many applications. So which we will, uh, which uh, we can get it from internet or uh, some others will come and uh, explain it, right? Oh. So now coming to the <coughs> last part of my lecture, it is the satellite navigation. Uh, who are all having the satellite uh, for navigation? So till now, uh, we can put it into basically the satellite navigation can be put into three broader headings. One is global constellation, the second one is regional constellation, and the last one is local constellation. So um, global constellation, the first one is the now star GPS. I have told you 24 number of known satellites is needed, and we have explained this. So till now, whatever we have explained is now star GPS, right? It is owned by uh, United States. Then we are having some other constellations also, LONAS, uh, Galileo, Compass. LONAS is for, by Russia, Galileo is by Europe, and Compass is for uh, uh, China. Likewise, we are having some regional constellations like uh, Japan, then uh, QZSS, then IRNSS, which is for India. Then we are having some local constellations also, which is called as uh, satellite augmentation system. So that means this will uh, is depending upon this, either global constellation or regional constellations, it will depend upon that and it will give specific, uh, uh, very accurate locations. So, so those are VAS, WAS, MSAS, EGNOS, Dagan, and uh, ESDCM. So, Dagan is uh, for India. Right? So, these are the local uh, satellite augmentation systems, otherwise, it is called as SBAS, uh, right? And uh, we are having regional constellations also, it is moving towards independent one, and these both are independent uh, to one another, and this one is dependent upon regional as well as global. So we will see one by one very fastly. Right. So GLONASS, they are the Russian uh, satellite system, which is otherwise called as Glo, it is uh, known as GLOMALNIA, Navigation Linea, Sputnik Systemia, or Global Navigation Satellite System. Right. So the, the full form of uh, GLONASS. So here actually uh, the first satellite was launched, the first satellite was launched in 1982 and it was completed in 1996. Okay. And uh, it consists of 24 so number of sat uh, 21 satellites and now, now it is more than 30, right? And uh, <clears throat> three orbital planes will be there. Here we can see, you see the height is 19,100 kilometers, whereas for the that is 20,200 kilometers, right? So slightly lower height it is there. And it has a semi major axis also at uh, 25,510 kilometers. And it completes the orbit in 11 hours and 16 minutes. So you will have uh, uh, some increments of uh, time there, which is left over, and it will be corrected later. And they, uh, so usually GLONASS satellites are identified by carriers. As I told you there, uh, GPS satellites are identified by the space vehicle number as well as PRN ports. So SVN and PRN are used to identify GPS, whereas here it is identified by carriers. So master control station is at this place. So this is how it looks in space. Right? I think I am having the animation also. So here you can see the three orbits in which all the right, satellites they are uh, set in the. So, okay. Then coming to Galileo. Galileo it is a European uh, space, uh, European Union uh, satellites. So they are they are very highly uh, accurate. And the importance is here actually uh, GPS, uh, GLONASS as well as uh, China's bureau. So all those are completely for, uh, the primary task is for military, but in Galileo it is for uh, civilian use. So mostly it is for civilian use, right? So here actually it is a guaranteed uh, service for civilian uses, okay? So whereas others they are for military uses, right? Okay. So Galileo, um, the uh, Galileo Bronas and everything, they, the principle will be same as that of the GPS only, very, very small, small cycle okay. uh, variations only will be there. Right? And but Galileo, it is put in three orbits. Lower orbit is there, medium orbit is there, inclined geocentrical orbit is also there. So in three types of orbits, the uh, satellite is there. Okay. So this uh, Galileo program was started in 19, uh, 2003. Yeah. 2003, it was officially managed, and 2005 they launched the first satellite, and it was completed in 2019. Right. So here we can see the major image and. Uh, semi major axis is 29,600 kilometers, so it is uh, higher than that, and the orbital period is 14 hours. Right. Okay, so here uh, we can see the constellation, I told you it is uh, 30, and uh, first launch uh, and the last launch is right, 2019, it has been completed. So, the linear is for Europe. Right? 
then uh, this is the way by which uh, the orbits are put in uh, the satellites are put in three orbits and it comes around uh, the globe giving the uh, satellite uh, giving the uh, location right okay so when we compare you can just sell the yeah, gps gun uh, global and galileo so these three are having so gps is having six orbital planes whereas global and galileo they are having three orbital planes so there are uh, slight slight differences so on the whole uh, it is how uh, on the whole you can just tell that uh, everything depends upon like uh, the basis will be the gps so based upon that a slight modification is being there and um, the satellites have been launched so over but here very important point to notice uh, we we are having gps loaders and galileo so if our uh, receiver is able to decode all the three then we will get very good uh, uh, accurate uh, gps readings or accurate locations and we need not uh, depend upon one country alone right so this is where we need right? so this is the future that we need. then coming to the bureau right uh, the bureau the, is uh, owned by china and here they are having uh, like a satellite based organization system as well as the global uh, facility and uh, in 2020 only they have uh, completed so very recently they have completed their uh, complete uh, uh, mission and uh, we see we can have very high accurate uh, uh, even for public okay. so just to see encrypted can be 10 cm level data as uh, public also can have 2.6 meters uh, accuracy uh, in uh, gps okay so uh, Bureau is another uh, system. China's Bureau, I told you, it is for the country, it is for the region, then it is for the global also. So global level satellite translations are four, uh, like GPS, Galileo, GLONASS, and China's Bureau. Okay. okay then uh, this combined system, as I told you, so mostly these three combined system, like GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo, they together have a number of uh, 75 satellites all together, and these 75 satellites also give the signals and if our receiver is able to able to decode all the three signals then we can get very high uh, real time position and elevation so like this so we can have you see these greens are from gpss then these yellows are from glonass and these reds are from video then this one is from user so maybe we can have like all those uh, signals when they come across then in urban carrier also we can get very specific uh, locations then coming to the regional constellations regional constellations mostly these are the independent constellations which are two in number quasi select uh, satellite system and comes our indian regional navigation satellite system right okay quasi select uh, satellite system they are this is uh, given by japan so these uh, uh these are the race called Michibiki, and this uh, Michibiki uh, system is a four satellite uh, regional system it is uh, like a satellite based augmentation system now and uh, later on it will be converted into an independent system so in uh, 2023 they have plans to convert it into an independent system so independent system in the sense it, uh, it, it, it will work independently and give the locations but now it is satellite augmented based now at this time point it is like satellite based augmentation system where this the readings will be the basic readings will be taken from gps donors and then you know and again the correction parameters will be carried out and you will get the accurate data. so here actually regional uh, regional augmentation systems or any local augmentation systems have based augmentation system the main principle is taking the uh, taking the readings or the locations from the global positioning systems Either it can be NASA GPS or it can be GLONASS or it can be Galileo or it can be Bureau. Right? Taking the basic information from them and get rid of all the errors and giving a very accurate uh, uh, position to the country. So this is the basic idea for that. Right? So this idea it can be independent or it can be like a, a satellite based organization system. So mostly almost all the uh, local constellations are based upon this satellite based organization system whereas this thing is actually independent to one another right so this is developed in 2018 and it was ended in 2018 itself and uh, <coughs> it gives very high precise locations for the japan and its country and its uh, nearby area right japan and uh, uh, so i will show you the map uh, in between then coming to the Indian regional navigation satellite system, here seven satellites are there. So these satellites, 
uh, will give the location data for for India as well as one for thousand five hundred kilometers from its border, right? In a buffer of thousand five hundred kilometers, we will have very very uh, accurate opposition, right? For India, and uh, you see here it, it ranges from thirty degree south to sixty degree north latitude as well as thirty degree east to one thirty degree east uh, latitude. Also, uh, uh, an extended area service also will be there. So IRS, uh, I will show you in the next map about that. Okay, and it also gives two services like standard positioning services and restricted service. Standard positioning service will be given to all users, whereas restricted will be only for the authorized users. So mostly authorized users only will be the multi right? Okay, then we can have a very better resolution than uh, 20 meters. Okay, so this is like this is the uh, main operation on our, uh, the primary area where we can get uh, good accuracy and it is having an extended rectangular area also where IR nurses work. Right? We can get a uh, good uh, uh, position in this area. Okay. Then coming to the local constellations, as I have already discussed, this will be satellite uh, based organization systems, which is otherwise called as satellite uh, yes, bus, yes, BAS. So that means satellite based means it will take the location from the uh, basic satellites like global constellations like uh, GLONASS, Galileo, and, um, and and GPS, and the correction parameters will be carried out and it will give specific. So there, there are five uh, in number now, and the two three are planned again. Three constellations are planned, right? So five are there um, uh, already existing: Mars, Yamsas, Yadnos, uh, Gagan, and ESBC. <coughs> so, yes, that's uh, working principle is like uh, GNSS satellites is there. Okay. So, it actually gets the data in the reference station. Reference stations will get the GNSS satellites. So, this can be of any global constellations. Then, the data will be here. It will be uh, processed here and given to the master station. Then, given to the SBAS satellite. And from the SBAS satellite, our uh, satellite based augmentation. System satellites, it will be given to the users, maybe for a receiver or for a uh, cab or for a uh, uh, aviation. So mostly here the major user will be aviation for people, right? So here we can see Mars is for uh, America, Eagles is for Europe area, here SDCM is for Russia, and uh, here Guardian is for India, and here for Japan and for China, right? BDS, BDS, BAS is for China. So these are the people, and here they are having some yellow markings where uh, they are also planning to have some uh, local missions or uh, local augmentation systems. Okay, so coming to the wide area augmentation system, as I told you, this is for uh, America. So mostly it was first planned for North America, then it was extended to South America also. Here we can have some uh, wide area master station, then wide area reference stations. Here we will have some reference stations here and all, we get the readings. Then it is given to the wide area augmentation or, or augmentation base station. Here it will be processed by the Earth's antenna. It will be given to the communication satellites, then given to the, uh, given to the uh, aviation users. Usually, not only really aviation users, even for transportation. So, all the augmentation systems are planned in such a manner only in order to get precise location for the engine. Right? So, this is the objective. And there are 23 precisely surveyed ground stations. Which get the GPS receivers and then they travel that they transmit the information to the aircraft. So here actually uh, they get the uh, as as we have known there are so many errors that the errors will be rectified. One thing and the second uh, thing is error rectification is one point and the second point is actually like uh, uh, it will provide a continuous. Uh, uh, position. Sometimes, uh, if we are going, if we are depending on global navigation satellite system, sometimes there will be some interruptions. Interruptions, or sometimes uh, you will have chunk uh, in data. You have to wait for something for getting the data. So, when this is in real time dynamics or a real time basis, it becomes difficult, right? So, uh, for uh, solving that uh, incontinuity, also, this uh, yes, best can be used. Um, wide area augmentation system or any augmentation systems they can be used. So we can have very <coughs> precise data like this in 0.2 meters, uh, uh, one, when, uh, less than 1 meters we can have uh, and data. Okay, so here what happens is uh, it very well uses for very well used for aircraft uh, uh, navigation. So <coughs> there will be no 
they are back can be very well managed uh, for the runway as well as uh, for all those that is used to us. Likewise, you see MSAS, multifunctional satellite harmonization system, it is for Japan, right? It is uh, for uh, Japan, it is mostly used for the accuracy, reliability, and safety of uh, GPS uh, the aircraft which uses. And uh, it improves the uh, it improves everything. And uh, what happens is uh, finally it can be used like there is here the satellite is multifunctional transport satellite. So there will be one satellite which will transmit the signals from the master control stations of this MSS. Okay. And it is used for aviation, the Ministry of Land, the infrastructure, and transport and also. Okay. okay. So this is uh, the stations here. The ground monitoring stations are four in number, then we are having some master control stations, so master control station, then we are having some uh, monitoring raising stations also nearby, so that the whole uh, Japan uh, is getting uh, very precise uh, allocations. So they, they actually increase the accuracy of traffic control or uh, air traffic control. Then uh, that means you see uh, it is a less workload for pilot as well as controllers, then uh, you can use like shortest uh, yeah. Flight path so that uh, it will uh, save the fuel, save uh, the flight fuel. So, this is how uh, it actually uh, helps uh, to protect the environment also. Right? Okay. Mm, then, coming to uh, European geostationary navigation overlay, so uh, it knows, so it knows it is uh, for Europe. So, even though they have Galileo with it, they take Galileo, uh, Galileo. Then GPS as well as GLONA. So the there was a very recently um, recently established one. Then they take the data from all those uh, all those three set of global constellations. Then they process here and uh, also they go to the master conversation. Then it is given to the uh, ambition and then it goes to the three geostationary EGNOS, uh, EGNOS satellites, which will be given to the Planet. Okay, so uh, even uh, to the planet, so that uh, we get very accurate uh, positions in the European area, right? European uh, countries. Okay, so European geostation navigation over the service is called EGNOS. Okay, I GNO, EGNO, yes. Okay, and uh, here, uh, here also the same thing is for accurate indicate and available. So there are uh, this uh, EGNOS service, they, are, they have. Uh, 40 ground stations, which is uh, spread across Europe at three geostationary satellites. Where all the, uh, again, the signals will be rectified and will be given for our use. Then coming to the Gagan, Gagan is Indian uh, one, GPS and geo detection navigation. Uh, navigation. Here uh, in Gagan, there are two satellites. Uh, <coughs> these two satellites are uh, placed in the globe. They take the GPS readings. Again, they take the GPS readings, they rectify them. Make the reading continuous and then they give it for uh, the people who are using it, India and around India, right? So, this is mostly used for military. So, GPS and geo augmented navigation is called as garden. So, this garden uh, gives very uh, precise uh, location like the it can give more than three meters accuracy so that we can find out, like, uh, like uh, the signal can be put into the, uh, put into the window. Uh, maybe a uh, missile can be launched uh, and it can be passing through the window and it can uh, hit into the room. So, in such a manner, it can be uh, devised. Okay. So, it also powers, the then also has the uh, power of harnessing GLONASS, GLONASS also. So, mostly it is used for um, uh, unmanned earlier vehicles, then helicopters and others. And, uh, they take these uh, three satellites, like GPS, GLONASS, and Gurgan, and uh, then uh, the process integrate and then it is given to the signal so that uh, all can use it. Okay. Then coming to the last one, it is the SDCM. This is used by Russia. So the system of differential correction and monitoring, system of differential correction and monitoring. So here again, the name is that it is there. So differential correction will be they made and will be monitored. The donors will be uh, will be integrated and it can be given for marine airborne terrestrial and space research. Okay. Uh, and it is developed by Russia, right? So the SDC. So here almost all the uh, uh, people are uh, all the maybe the cruisers then. Uh, the uh, caps and all can be very well uh, monitored by using these 
to the SS. Okay, so they will be having their own originating stations and ground uh, control stations here and there. And uh, systems are they are uploaded to the satellite and it is being uh, used. Okay, so they are they are also there are a few components. Most of these uh, will have a space component as well as a control segment. And <coughs> this control segment will be able to be able to um, monitor the uh, satellites as well as its uh, flaws and all and uh, uh, setbacks and it will uh, rectify it and it will be further uh, improve the positioning accuracy and it will be given to each and every user of uh, SDCM also. So, uh, so uh, the objective is mostly coming in, uh, bringing into 1 to 1.5 meters horizontal and 2 to 3 meters vertical. So that is the accuracy which is expected out of this okay. and we give and it is also a, a, a offer a centimeter position service right so for the reference stations okay. so centimeter level sub centimeter level accuracy is also so that we will uh, finish today's uh, lecture if there is any uh, clarifications you can put it in the chat box and uh, we i have referred here uh, these two books uh, and uh, the pictures are taken from the internet for explanation purposes so, you can use it. so the second one is a textbook and the first one is a text book which we can use it for uh, the studies okay. okay thank you thank you for your uh, patience listening and i wish us all from our university for all of you thank you uh, welcome up uh uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Participants, if you have any queries, you can write now. If you have any uh, queries, you can write now. Dear participants, if you have any queries, you can write now. Yeah, you can just put it in the chat box so that I can uh, answer. And go into the okay. chat box for uh, the queries. Uh, is there, there is one query, madam, is control station getting any error in GNSS. Yeah, the control station, uh, actually the control station is there to monitor the errors because the location of the control station is very precisely known and it will be having its own atomic clock also. So what happens is when the location with the clock is very well known, control station can monitor the errors also, right? So that is the uh, that is the main job of the control station, right? So they will monitor the errors and it will be given to NAN. NANU. I have told you this slide. There it will be there and it will be available in the website also for the users. So if we need very precise locations, we have to take that also into consideration, right? So uh, uh, definitely uh, they will monitor each and every satellite at each and every time and it will be rectified. Right? It will be rectified in, uh, in other things and it will be coming along with the navigation message also. And our receiver, whenever it is made on, what happens is it will send the navigation message also. So when you uh, discuss detail in GPS signals, we can, uh, maybe they will discuss with you. So actually the navigation message will have uh, that property also. So whatever problem is there will be coming along with the navigation message so that accordingly our system our system software will manage and it will calculate the uh, uh, calculate the uh, exact position and region. Okay, any any other? Please explain, madam. Users uh, manager station and monitor station. Uh, what is the accuracy of GNSS receivers in uh, smartphones? Actually, smartphone technology is something different. Like uh, you see, it uses the accuracy of your like uh, the cell phone towers also. So uh, apart from your uh, uh, the girl, uh, apart GPS will be there, global constellation, then local constellation will be there. Taking all those local constellation also, it will, it will take the location of the receiver also, or uh, the uh, cell phone tower. Cell phone tower as well as the distance between the cell phone tower as well as our uh, GPS uh, I mean, phones, smartphones. So what happens is, when this is the case, you will get very accurate uh, readings. So uh, maybe our uh, GPS phone even tells you when you are your gate. In front of your gate, it will give you the exact location. So because it uses cell phone technology also in, in addition to the GPSs. Okay. Then uh, why this question, uh, Mr. Suman, uh, yeah, Suman Smithson, uh, please uh, explain, madam, uses uh, manager station and monitor station. I'm not sure what manager station is. I didn't explain this. Monitor station, it is there for the globe. 
each and every uh, GPS satellites are having stations over the globe. From there, they will monitor the satellites and satellites wonder whether it is working properly or it is having any problem. So that monitoring will be done by monitor station. And this, this information will be given to the master control station. In the master control station, so actually monitoring stations, they are manless. There will be no people. So it will be just monitored and given to the, given to the uh, master control station where processing will be carried out and then they will be, uh, the data will be given to the ground control station from where by s band link it will be given to the satellite. So the satellite again to communicate to all the users through their navigation message. Okay, so this is the function of monitoring stations. So monitoring stations, they just monitor the satellite. Whether it is properly working or not. So satellites in the sense, other by its solar panel, then its clock, everything should properly work. Okay, so that is the function of my station. But I am not sure about this manager station. If you want, you can put another question. I couldn't understand that. Okay. Then um, thank you for everybody who have uh, uh, who appreciated uh, my presentation. And then maybe I will see please explain uses of master station and monitor station. Okay. So that only I told you. Master, master control station will be there under the control of the country. Right? So there 24 hours they will be working. They they actually manage everything. Everything, the space segment, the control segment, everything they manage. Then they get the data from the monitor station, they process, give it to the ground station, and then it will be communicated to the satellite. Right? Okay. Um, then <coughs> control station for our uh, GPS IRSS, I think it is located in Bangalore, but I am not very sure. You can just browse and find it out. Uh, then, 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 then. And control station for our uh, remote sensor satellite is there in Hyderabad. <coughs> And the back we are having all the conversations. And why need yes, uh, There is already global coverage. Uh, okay, so this question is a nice question because uh, the thing is, global uh, navigation satellite systems they give uh, accurate data, but uh, there will be some problems in, because I told you uh, from 20,200 uh, kilometers the signal has to come and you will be having a lot of errors. So every now and then there will be errors, and these errors and all has to be rectified. That is one thing. And for the whole globe, they have planned. And sometimes what happens is at certain points there may not be uh, the availability of signals. So in order to ensure continuous availability of the signals, and in order to ensure accurate data, hundred percent accurate data every time, then uh, we need SBAS. So satellite-based augmentation systems are there for helping us to give a continuous uh, uh, position service. That too in a good accurate, uh, accurate level. So in global positioning system, what happens is the accuracy level also may fluctuate. So it may be like 5 meters, then 3 meters, then 10 meters. So when that is the case, it becomes very difficult for us to do a survey. So when it is yes bass, then we can get a very uh, accurate, uh, uh, accurate and systematic uh, method of uh, getting uh, the, uh, the signals, right? the locations. Madam, is conversation getting any error in now that I have answered? Okay. So I think I have answered all the questions. Hello, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, yeah, yes. any questions? Are you listening me? Ma'am, what's the difference between uh, GNSS and uh, GPS? How, how we identify? Uh, uh, the uh, GPS uh, is the earlier uh, term. Global, global position because, system. Uh, GPS is the earlier term uh, which was uh, used by uh, Americans. So when it was only when uh, the navigation system was only with America, it was called GPS, right? Global positioning system. Okay. Nowadays, as other countries have developed, so we can see like after uh, maybe 1990 or not, other countries have developed. So when all those came into existence, they have coined a bigger term telling us global navigation satellite system. So that is the difference. Okay. okay. Thank you. So maybe if you see in the book also, if the book is published before 2000, then you will find only GPS. 
right? The term will be GPS. But after 2000, if you see the books, it will be just like global navigation satellite systems. So the terminology only changes, but uh, the thing is same. But now GPS means it is the GPS owned by uh, United States, right? Okay. Am I clear? Okay, thank you. Uh, any more doubts? No, ma'am. No. So what is biphase modulation? One question is there. <coughs> so actually binary, uh, binary biphase modulation. So here I told you like uh, the codes that maybe this will be explained in the signal structure class, but still uh, for the timing I'll just tell you like uh, carrier waves or sine waves, right? So they, they, they actually, they are uh, sine waves in, uh, uh, which goes in a baby pattern. And digital codes are zeros and ones, right? So when the digital code, either it may be a post acquisition code or a, a like a, or a precise code, what happens is when the uh, precise code is like when the course changes from zero to one, when the course changes from zero to one, here the carrier wave will rotate to 180 degrees, right? So it will change to 180 degrees. So that is by case modulation. Right? So by that modulating procedure only, it carries away the signals as well as the digital force as well as the navigation message. Okay. Okay, I think I have uh, uh, answered all the questions. If there is any queries, you can just ask me. Maybe we are having to three minutes more. One or two questions you can ask now also. So if not, I, will, I thank all the participants who have appreciated me in this uh, session. Thank you for your patient listening. Jitin sir, shall we wind up? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. I thank you, ma'am, for giving a valuable information about uh, global navigation satellite system. I think it is a fruitful section for us, and I thank all the participants for your kind cooperation with us. Thank you all. Thank you once. Thanks once again. Their participants, the next session will be started at 2 p.m. Uh, the feedback link is available now, available at the chat box. You can fill in. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jitin, sir. Thank you, participants. Have a nice day. Thank you. Participants, the feedback link is available in the chat box. Uh, you can fill the same.
the participants uh, you can leave now